Infinite Opportunities helps you learn more about the wide range of enriching opportunities at Pennsylvania's 14 state system universities. This week, we focus on health-related programs across the state system. First, we'll hear from East Stroudsburg University's President, Marshall Welsh. Hello, I'm Frank Brogan, the Chancellor of the Pennsylvania System of Higher Education. 14 world-class universities scattered around the Commonwealth who for years have provided great opportunities to young men and young women who go on then to become the bedrock of workforce of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I have with me a special guest, Dr. Marsha Welsh, who is the president of one of our 14 universities, East Stroudsburg University. Dr. Welsh has an illustrious career, longtime member of the higher education community with undergraduate degrees in the sciences, graduate degrees in anatomy, and even a PhD in anatomy. So she is well-schooled and a seasoned veteran in the world of higher education. Welcome, Dr. Welsh. We're delighted to have you with us. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Dr. Welsh, there's been an amazing number of changes taking place at East Stroudsburg as all of our universities are working together to try to develop where each of those and then collectively our system will head over the next 20 years. Can you tell us a little bit about East Stroudsburg, uh, how long it's been around, some of its priorities, and then talk a little bit about where East Stroudsburg vision will take it over the years to come. Okay. Uh, East Strasbourg University is in a gateway location. It couldn't be better. We're sitting in the heart of the Pocono Mountains. We are totally surrounded by wonderful recreational opportunities, skiing, snowboarding, any kind of water activity. Um, I know you've been to our, our fabulous water parks, and uh, after the next one is completed, we will be the water park capital of the East Coast. But you can also go canoeing down the Delaware, play around a golf, and, and it's just a lovely place to be with so many resorts. But we're also located 75 four miles from Midtown Manhattan, 85 miles from downtown Philadelphia, and we're nestled between uh, Lehigh Valley with Allentown and Bethlehem, which are two very vibrant communities, and then just north of us we have Scranton and Wilkesbury. So tremendous opportunities for our students, whether they want to have opportunities for an internship in a resort or actually want an internship down on Wall Street or up in Scranton. So tremendous, tremendous opportunity. Well, I can attest to how beautiful it and is, that, and I can attest to those great water parks that are uh, up there in the Pocono Mountains. Many videos, videos of those, did you? They are fantastic. Um, no videos exist to my knowledge. Okay. Hey, uh, East Strasburg is also well known for so long as uh, a jump off point in the world of education for it teachers, is. for the Commonwealth, for the country, and even the world. You've been doing a great deal of work in your uh, College of Education. Tell us a little bit about some of the changes that you're making there. Well, our College of Education this year is celebrating its 15th year of PDS partnerships with schools all the way from Bethlehem to Mount Pocono. Um, the partnerships allow our students their freshman year. Our teacher candidates are in the schools working with teachers and it's a great partnership between the teachers in the schools, the faculty and the students to ensure that our students are very well prepared when they graduate with their teacher certificate. And it's interesting, we've recently been getting students our students have been getting jobs simply with phone interviews. Uh, they just they, they understand the maturity of the students, the experiences they've had, and they get on-the-spot jobs. So it's really a fabulous program for them. Well, as a, a member of the education class myself, uh, having gone to a college of education in Ohio, uh, I've watched the Commonwealth, as we all have, begin to change in terms of the demographic. Right now, of course, there aren't as many school-age children moving through the pre-K through 12 system in the Commonwealth. But that's also required, and I think our universities, which have turned out teachers for so long in our state university system, have adopted the need to begin to refocus and reorganize our efforts to make sure that we're turning out world-class teachers for the 21st century. And I know East Strasburg is a major player in that regard. Absolutely. And our students, with, with 17 PDS schools, there are 15 states in the nation that will only hire our students trained in PDS schools and so even though our students may not this year be able to work in Pennsylvania they are continuing continuing to get experiences and can work in our get jobs immediately in neighboring states and then they are experienced teachers and Pennsylvania wants them back. Tell us a little bit about some of your other academic programs. You've got some digital media programs, technology programs. We have uh, we do a lot with technology but uh, digital media 
uh, digital media technology has just merged into the College of Business and Management because they feel it's a better match for them. They do amazing things. I, I had our students do our holiday video. Our students are doing commercials for us. They really are talented students that are top, top um, state of the art. And they're really doing great things. We also do quite a bit with GIS. Our geography department just merged with our history department, keeping GIS as a strong minor an interdisciplinary minor that can work with many of our majors uh, where GIS is a part of it, whether it's economics, history, hotel, restaurant, tourism management. Uh, they really, it really is compatible with so many majors for our students today. And with your background in health, I know you're doing work in uh, public health research and innovation. Absolutely. Tell us about that. We you? have a very strong College of Health Sciences and our health studies department with our public health uh, major has been doing uh, lion's share of the work for that college. They actually have, let me get it straight, it's the Institute of Public Health Research and Innovation. And they are out in the community partnering with all of our healthcare systems to work to find solutions for healthcare problems in our community. One of the strongest, one of the first things they did, and a strong program for us, we got external funding and have a partnership with the Commonwealth Medical College. We offer the public health degree, the master's in public health degree, they offer the MD and their students graduate with an MD, MPH. And it's really a, a fabulous opportunity for those students. Well, major fully area, funded. Uh, fully funded, fully music funded. to my ears. Uh, one of the major priorities that we've taken on these days in our system, as you know better than most, is trying to make certain that our degrees translate to an opportunity for our graduates to move into ultimately the world of work and secure for themselves and their family uh, a great job and a great quality of life. And you're doing so many innovative things in that regard at East Stroudsburg. Among them, you're doing work in 3D digital. How's that That's work? Right. Uh, it's fabulous. I came to East Stroudsburg with uh, significant knowledge in 3D design and additive manufacturing from prior experiences, and so I asked to see our 3D printers. We didn't have any. Now we have state-of-the-art laboratory. Uh, it's called G3D, G3 Design. Uh, we have printers, scanners, uh, 3D software, laser cutters, everything that you could possibly need to develop a career in 3D printing. And 3D printing isn't just art and design. It isn't just jewelry making. I think that most people now know your diamond ring probably was 3D design. Uh, but it's also making chocolates for a wedding cake. It's making uh, medical prostheses. It's, it is a job for anybody. And we also have a business accelerator in our innovation center we have some businesses now doing additive manufacturing and our students are able to partner with these entrepreneurs and learn how to build their own business and use 3D printing in multiple ways and it's been a tremendous partnership. Well I know how proud you are of your faculty and student body at East Stroudsburg and well you should be. Absolutely. Uh, and you are doing some remarkable reorganizational and, and strategic changes for the university and its future. You're a complement to the system. Tell us some of the challenges that East Stroudsburg, like so many of our universities in higher ed, are facing these days. Well. Obviously, we have fiscal challenges like everyone else in higher education these days, but we're trying to deal with it by uh, really evaluating all of our academic programs. If they are no longer strong programs or no longer really needed, maybe that uh, program is offered down the, down the road at another university. We need to be much more strategic in what we offer. We need to be sure that students get experiential learning opportunities in their major. So if those opportunities aren't available, maybe we need to, to reinvest uh, some of our, our dollars into programs that really are high demand for our community for the region in which we live and, and be sure that we're serving the students. Well, as I mentioned, uh, a major area of emphasis for us is not only each university looking and examining its academic program and how it will move forward for the next 20 years, but how we as 14 universities serving over 110,000 students will align that curriculum to make sure that wherever you go in one of the uh, state-owned universities, which is the Pennsylvania system of higher education, that you can ultimately 
ultimately leave having had an incredible world-class experience, but also take with you that marvelously important degree and the opportunity then to take it to the next level. So I want to thank you for the work that you do at East Stroudsburg, Dr. Welsh, and through you, all the people at East Stroudsburg. You're a very important part of what makes our state university system tick. And thank you so much for being with us. You're very welcome. Coming up next, explore more opportunities offered at the universities in Pennsylvania's state system of higher education. I chose Kutztown because I wanted to be surrounded by colleagues with a passion for teaching. At KU, we have internationally known linguists, Ivy League educated faculty. It's a top-notch institution. But it's not just the collective credentials. I love teaching here because we get to know our students and we reach out to them. We care about each one as a whole person. We want to inspire them to love to learn, lifelong. Choose Kutztown University. Welcome back to Infinite Opportunities. Next, we go to East Stroudsburg University to learn more about the Institute for Public Health Research and Innovation. The Institute of Public Health was created one year ago in March of 2014. It was created as an opportunity to grow the research endeavors of the, uh, the university. We had existing projects but with the Institute, it, it brought together the different partners that allowed us to become stronger um, in not only in the products that we produce, but in being able to harness new opportunities uh, for research in the future. The Institute is really a, uh, an academic anchor to a lot of the organizations uh, in the region. We provide those organizations uh, public health expertise and in turn uh, help them do their jobs better, which then indirectly impacts the health of the uh, residents of the region. Uh, as one of two public health programs outside of the urban areas of Pennsylvania, we, our research and our programming really looks to try to improve the needs uh, and the quality of life of uh, the citizens of Pennsylvania. The Institute actually is involved in a number of community-based organizations, Pocono Health Systems, is one of the organizations that we've had a long-standing history of working with. And um, another is the Commonwealth College of Medicine up in Scranton, uh, Pennsylvania. We work with them in the context of helping train their uh, medical students in uh, public health. By harnessing and leveraging and partnering with our community uh, colleagues, we are really advancing the strategic mission of the university of serving uh, as a university without walls of working with community partnerships uh, that not only in areas of research and training, but also in providing students and, and future professionals with that gateway into the practitioner's world and the, the workforce in, of public health. My experience working with the Institute and the benefit that has given me is to have hands-on experience working in public health. As a student who came right from undergrad to a master's program, I didn't have much experience with public health or any outside experience, so I've been able to do some research, data analysis, and really figure out what public health is, figure out what I enjoy doing, and this gives me good experience for my career later on. I think one of the most important um, aspects of what we do here with uh, the Institute is engaging students in uh, projects that extend beyond uh, the classroom assignment. We offer opportunities to uh, both our graduate students as well as our undergraduate students in applied research, uh, program evaluation, program planning. What we're learning in class is actually being done in the real world and having that experience has helped me be able to do an internship, write a publishable paper, and again working on the grant stuff here. I think public health is good because we have students from many different disciplines, from psychology, we have people from biology, we have people from even 
like economics, you can get, it, it brings many different sectors of uh, the university together to want to solve one problem, the health of the community. So I think that the Institute provides a model for other departments in the university and other um, departments within the PASHI system that uh, uh, what we're trying to do here is not only provide a public health um, uh, expertise to the region, but we're also providing opportunities for students to become engaged in research, to become engaged in applied work beyond the walls of the classroom. And I think that that's critical in terms of uh, launching their careers. What they can do is not only uh, work on their GPA and get their degree, but also uh, build their resume in terms of the different types of applied work that we're doing here in the Institute. Coming up next, explore more opportunities offered at the universities in Pennsylvania's state system of higher education. Focus on success. Since 1837, Cheney University has been preparing thousands of young men and women to become successful leaders in the fields of business, arts and science, education, and professional studies. At Cheney University, you'll not only receive an affordable, quality college education, but the attention you deserve from faculty who care about you and your success. Focus on success at Cheney University. Why did you choose Lock Haven University Clearfield? Because it's convenient, it's affordable, and the faculty's awesome. Because I'm getting a great education that's close to home. It's the right size and right fit for our students. At LHU Clearfield, I get so much more than I pay for. It's for the friendly student atmosphere and I love coming here. It's a great learning environment. Working at LHU Clearfield allows me to help our students achieve their goals. Because it'll help me get a great career. Welcome back to Infinite Opportunities. Next, we go to California University of Pennsylvania to learn more about the Applied Behavioral Analysis Program. Our um, twin boys, Aiden and Jacob, were diagnosed with autism when they were two years old. When we received the diagnosis, it was traumatic. Applied Behavior Analysis is an evidence-based practice looking at how we may use certain principles to change behavior. A lot of parents of children with autism want services for their children because they know that this works. They want early intervention. Our boys were nonverbal. We had two therapists come into our home 30 hours a week. They had very structured programs to work with our boys, so as time went on, we would see small successes that would then turn into big successes for them. When parents, for example, are talking about the treatment of their children, they are going to go to the board certified behavior analyst. California University of Pennsylvania is offering the program. We have a lab, so we already have a place for students to work with each other and also with technology, with iPads and do video modeling, and to work with students, pupils with disabilities, with families. In order to become a board certified behavior analyst, there are several steps. First is one must complete an approved sequence of courses. The second aspect is the practicum or this field supervision that has to be done. The final step is to take the national exam. If you go through CalU, it's going to be shorter and better quality. It gives you this problem solving approach for working with children, also for working with adults. Well, one person may be more interested in the population of students with autism. Another person may be more interested in working with teenagers who are at risk for being involved in the juvenile justice system. A lot of people, they start off in the classroom and they think, you know, I'm not sure I want to do this for the rest of my life. Maybe I'd like to work with older individuals. I'd like to work in a group home. Maybe I'd like to even work in a different field. You know, you can work in business if you specialize in organizational behavior. We have a variety of interests and a variety of expertise among ourselves so that each student coming in would be able to find a perfect fit for a mentor. When looking at the number of board certified behavior analysts just in Pennsylvania, I do think that there is a greater need for those based off of the number of individuals that are diagnosed with exceptionalities. 
West Virginia, for example, there's only so many certified providers and so there's a waiting list to get services. The same is true even in Pennsylvania. The BACB has a list of the applied fields, education, psychology, counseling, special education, applied behavior analysis, speech language pathology. Thank goodness for all of these professionals that we've had in our lives because they're the ones to credit for the success that our boys have had. We feel really positive about their future and the direction that they're going. We need more individuals in our community, professionals that are trained in ABA. Coming up next, explore more opportunities offered at the universities in Pennsylvania's state system of higher education. It takes courage to raise your GPA and raise a toddler. To clock out of work and into class. Okay. To fight for your country and for your college degree. To start your freshman year at age 35. You're ready to pursue your dreams? Let us show you how Clarion can give you the confidence to get started. Courageous. Confident. Clarion. I really enjoy partnering with my professors on their research. It allows me to explore my field and prepare for my career. The impact I have on students goes beyond the classroom. Mentoring, advising, and sometimes just listening. The faculty definitely have an open door policy. You can stop by to talk about classwork, your career, or just life. When WebPageFX is looking for technical talent, the first place we turn is Shippensburg University. Ship is teaching me how to learn and adapt. That's critical for success in this industry. Welcome back to Infinite Opportunities. Next, we go to Bloomsburg University of Pennsylvania to learn about Shady Maranta's passion for medicine. Well, I grew up in New York originally, in Queens, to Dominican immigrants. And then we moved to Pennsylvania when I was eight years old. So it was really different coming from such a big city to a smaller town, but I think it did me really well. My main thing is that I want to empower people. I want to be like someone to look up to that says, oh, I can do this too, she did it, why can't I? So when I was little, um, I burned my face, so that's kind of why I want to go into medicine. I want to go into plastic surgery, specifically reconstructive, to help people not just fix someone's face up just because they want to have like a new better nose or whatever. I want to help people because I burned my face off when I was little. I knew what it was like to, for people to look at you like, oh, you don't belong here, you don't look normal, what's wrong with you? And I know there's a lot of people that have like just deformities and some problems and they don't want to go out. I actually applied to 20 schools and this was the one that resonated with me the most. You're not just a number here. The professors know you by name. I just feel like this home here. Coming up next, explore more opportunities offered at the universities in Pennsylvania's state system of higher education. We are the link that will invigorate a community of partnerships that will make a significant difference to our local community, the region, and even the nation. I am John Anderson, president of Millersville University. We are making things happen here for our students, for our graduates, for the world. Join us. Welcome back to Infinite Opportunities. Next, we go to Indiana University of Pennsylvania to learn about concussion management. Simply put, concussion is an injury to the brain. Now, these injuries can range from very minor, where the athlete clears very quickly and there's very little damage to the brain tissue itself, or it can be quite serious, where the brain is what we would call concussed, and this brain trauma can last for prolonged periods of time. Here at IUP, we have a multifaceted program in order to manage our concussions. When's it best to return an athlete back to sport? That's always been a, an issue. Sometimes we can make a diagnosis of concussion, but 
when is it safe for that athlete to go back. And we obviously want them to go back as safely as possible and also as soon as possible. So now we have some new tools that allow us to do that. One of them is the uh, computer-based program that we use here at IUP. A lot of the professional teams use them in football, baseball, hockey. Actually, IUP has been using the neurocognitive testing since 2002. We started doing baseline testing on all of our football players in 2004, and our women's and men's basketball players have been baseline since 2005. Uh, we use this just to make sure that the brain is functioning. Uh, one of the other things that this program does is it actually has uh, a section in it where they give us all of their symptoms. Basically, it's a symptom inventory. So it asks them, have they, do they have a headache? Do they have uh, nausea? Have they vomited? Um, are they irritable? Do, are they sad? I was on second base and went to go steal third. I dove in to steal instead of slide in feet first, and the way that I landed caused a, my head to kind of whiplash, and then that caused the concussion. I continued to play the game. I really didn't feel much different. It started to hit me about an hour after the game. First thing I went to do was saw uh, my trainer, uh, Jess. Uh, at that point, she first, one of the first things she had me do was just take the impact test. I took the impact test, my memory composite scores were very low, memory, my memory scores in pretty much all categories were very low. If the, the measures weren't taken that were, uh, I may have just, you know, the education they've given us from the square one, they give us a form, they show us videos about things that could happen if you play while you're still symptomatic. I may have just returned to play and uh, subjected myself to further damage. Once you've been diagnosed with a concussion, the brain goes through a healing phase. And during that healing phase is also the brain is very vulnerable. If you were to get hit again during this vulnerable state, you could develop something called second impact syndrome, which could be very, very devastating. There's a number of goals we consider concussion management. One is the protection of athletes. But secondly, here at IUP, we have to also consider the development of our young professionals, our students that are going to go out into the field and treat and be on the front line for care of concussion. Well, here today we're simulating an athlete who has a suspected head injury, who is either non-responsive or unconscious. Uh, so a lot of the things that we can practice in the classroom setting as far as memory and amnesia and, and clinical reasoning and so forth, we can't necessarily uh, do with an unconscious patient. So here we can mimic um, having to take vital signs, looking at pupillary reaction, assessing breathing rates, so forth, things that uh, then we, when we put a sole scenario together, they then have to make decisions as far as what's the next course of action. I believe that the collaboration we have with a number of other professionals in the field, being our medical directors, team physicians, both our clinical and curriculum athletic trainers, as well as our nursing department, the many um, facilities and resources they can provide, helps us to greatly prepare our student athletic trainers in the care of sports-related injury and concussion. Come back next week to learn more of the infinite opportunities at the state system's 14 universities or visit us online.